Over the past year, we have made some significant upgrades to our outdoor living area by adding eight wall speakers, four rock speakers, and a pair of 12 inch subwoofers from OSD. Now, although it sounds great for music, there was always one thing that was missing, an outdoor TV. Well, today we're gonna to be looking at the 55 inch Aurora full shade outdoor TV from Furion. Now in full disclosure, Furion did send me the TV for review, but this video isn't sponsored by them and they have not reviewed the video prior to this going live. Now in this video, I'll share some things that you need to consider if you're going to install an outdoor TV and also my thoughts on the Furion 55 inch TV. Now when it comes to outdoor TVs, many have used standard indoor TVs and have used like silicone to help protect them from the outdoor elements. Now, although you do not have to use a TV that is rated for outdoor use, they do typically offer better protection from dirt, dust, and humidity than a standard indoor TV does. Now, Furion offers the Aurora in 43-inch, 49-inch, 55-inch, and 65-inch sizes. Now, I elected for the 55-inch as it fits perfectly between a triple sliding glass door and an adjacent window. Our outdoor living area is fully covered, so I opted for the full shade model. Now, if your TV is going to be in a location where there's direct sunlight, they do offer a partial sun option, which also comes in the same 43 inch, 49 inch, 55 inch, and 65 inch sizes. Now, along with the TV, you'll get an IP67 waterproof remote, which means that it's completely protected from things like dust and can be submersed into about a meter of water for up to 30 minutes. They also include an HDMI extender because a Roku or a Fire Stick is really too long to fit in the TV ports without it. Now, one thing that surprised me is that included with the Furion is an actual Roku device as well as a fixed tilt mount. I didn't expect that, but that was a really cool surprise. Now, since I did not know that, I had already purchased a Fire Stick TV, 4K, as well as a full motion TV mount. Now, if you want additional protection, Furion does offer an optional TV cover for about $80 to $130, depending on the size that you choose. Now, this TV is quite hefty, weighing in at over 60 pounds. The metal frame feels rugged and not cheap, and even has a rough texture versus the standard cheap plastic frame that you typically find with indoor TVs. On the rear of the unit, you'll find the buttons behind a rubber gasket to protect against dust and moisture with basic controls for power, volume, channel, menu, and source. Also, another really cool feature is a rear access panel that protects the HDMI, USB ports and other connections from dust and moisture as well. Now, if you loosen the three thumb screws, you'll find connections for RF, PC, VGA, composite and component video, IR extender, RCA out, which I'll later be using to connect to my OSD outdoor speaker system, three HDMI inputs, one with ARC, which is your audio return channel, and a connection for USB. Now the TV does not have ethernet, so depending on the strength of your Wi-Fi connection outdoors, you may wanna purchase an even longer HDMI extender to allow the included Roku or your Fire Stick TV to be placed outside the TV for better Wi-Fi reception. The IP67 waterproof remote has just about every function that you'll need. I did find the buttons a bit difficult to locate without actually looking at the remote, as they all kind of feel similar and they're pretty flat compared to standard remotes. Now the remote is nothing fancy, but the good news is you can safely leave it outside and not have to worry about the outdoor elements messing with the remote. Now I was not able to get the Roku remote to control the TV's power and volume, but I was able to program the Fire Stick TV 4K to control the TV. So that's what we ended up using was the Fire Stick 4K TV remote instead of the Furion remote. Now, if you have never installed an outdoor TV and you wanna do it yourself, I highly recommend checking out Be The Installer. He's a professional installer on YouTube and offers some great video tutorials as well as TV installation. 
Now I did watch one of Brandon's outdoor TV installation videos. Now he made it look really easy, but I knew I didn't have the tools to drill as well as to cut into concrete. And I also wanted to have a wall outlet directly behind the TV. So I chose to hire a professional to install mine, which cost me $250. Now, honestly, I am very glad that I did that because when he cut into the cement block to install the wall outlet, he discovered it was right in front of two cement blocks. So he had to actually chisel them out to get the gang box to fit in it. Now, although the Furion does come with a fixed TV mount, I wanted the ability to rotate the TV and actually pull it away from the wall. So I used Be The Installer's recommendation of this Dream TV full motion mount that easily extends, swivels, and also allows me to angle the TV downward. Now you can check out the links in the description below for B's channel, as well as this TV mount. Now fortunately, I had an outlet directly below where I wanted to install the TV, so my installer was able to tie into that outlet. Now depending on your situation, it might be more difficult to get power to your desired location. Now whatever size TV you choose, be sure to get a TV mount that matches the VESA pattern. Now the VESA is basically the distance between each screw hole. And so the 55 inch TV is a 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter VESA compatible. Now I'm certainly no video file, but Jessica and I both found that the image on the Furion, even without calibration, provides a beautiful 4K HDR image, especially at night after the sun goes down. Colors are rich and saturated and they just have a nice pop to them. Now the blacks are deep, but they're certainly not anywhere near the OLED level blacks. And as with most TVs and even with a projector system, the more ambient light that you have coming onto the TV, the more washed the image is going to appear. So around 10 a.m., as you can see here, even under a fully covered lanai, the TV does present a lot of reflections from the sky and surrounding objects, even though the TV has an anti-glare screen. Now this is likely typical with other outdoor TVs, but I did want to point that out in case you're expecting this TV to be free from all reflections. That's just not going to be the case. Now as with most TVs, the internal speakers on the Furion TV it's really nothing amazing here, but it's definitely plenty loud enough for outdoor use. And when it gets cooler, I'll be running an RCA cable to the TV from my theater room to connect to my OSD outdoor speaker system. And that'll allow me to have a more immersive sound experience when watching TV outside. Now I did a series of several videos on the outdoor speaker install. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. And if you don't have a large audio system to tap into, Furion does offer a 2.0 and a 2.1 soundbar for under $200. Now Jessica loves to exercise. So the day that the TV was installed, she asked me if I could hook up her Peloton exercises to it. And so I downloaded the Peloton app via the Fire Stick TV 4K, and she's been using it every single evening to exercise. The other day I even found her laying out in the sun with a TV on, streaming ocean sounds from YouTube. She was nice and relaxed. And needless to say, I just think this is a great addition to our outdoor living area. Now before you consider installing an outdoor TV in your setup, here's a few things that you just might need to consider. Number one, how will you get power to the TV? Are you gonna run the cord just down the wall? Are you going to use maybe conduit or even try to take that power inside your walls? Is that something that you want to tackle yourself or should you hire a professional like I did? Are you going to use the TV speakers or are you wanting to tie into an outdoor speaker system or maybe use a soundbar? And lastly, installing an outdoor TV does require quite a bit more work than an indoor TV, especially if you need to run power to it or maybe even strengthen the Wi-Fi signal uh, that you've got in your outdoor living area, or maybe even running wires through the wall. Now, fortunately, there's some great resources online like Be The Installer on YouTube that can help provide solid advice and even step-by-step -step tutorials on how to do it yourself. Or you may find that it's something that you just rather pay someone else to install for you. 
Now, if you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel as I make several videos each week on home theater, audio and video. And if you're interested in the outdoor speaker system that I installed, check out this playlist. And as always, you guys be blessed and we'll catch you in the next video.